fucking get poor. Amen. So go get the fucking vaccine and stop being stupid, ho. Amen. So go get the fucking vaccine and stop being stupid, ho. Nah, I knock niggas out for a living, ho. And I'm a, and I'm a real bitch. Oh, from shut the fuck DC up. To Miami. And say there comes a time when you do have to give up what you consider your individual right of making your own decision for the greater good of society. Ordinary men and women are too small minded to govern their own affairs. We don't want to be told what to do. Well, I understand that, but now is the time to do what you're told go get your shot okay when you do get a universal flu vaccine you're going to want to give it to six month old kids she pregnant and she got the shot yes okay you're going to want to give it to six month old kids amen so go get the fucking vaccine to do what you're told that order and progress can only come when individuals surrender their rights to an all-powerful sovereign. Get vaccinated. 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 Vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Shall we? Call him now. You how? Bahashim, Yahushai, Bahashim, Rekakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and the Lord and Savior, Yahushai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. So we're going to go into some scriptures this evening. Let's start here. I'm going to go to Psalms. Let's start at the top. Chapter 125. <coughs> the book of Psalms, chapter 125, verse 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. This is the government of the Lord which starts with the leaders. So we're seeing our leaders. That holy mountain of the Lord are the elect of the house of Israel, which starts with the 144,000 under Yahweh and King David. Verse two, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. So the kryptonite of the Israelite is sin. That is what opens us up to be destroyed. But if we abide in the house of the Lord, in his word, he protects his people. His elect are abiding in this pure doctrinal truth. So we are protected under the refuge of the Lord. Let's look at that word refuge. Refuge. 
Refuge. A condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. So when the storms and trials of tribulation come, he's going to protect his elect. Why you think the Bible says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Let's go to images. Refuge. Wow, look at that. A strong tower. Let's go to Proverbs 18 and 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So the name carries this full true doctrine. You cannot separate the name from the true doctrine. Now let's go back to the scriptures. <clears throat> back to Psalms 125, verse 2. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. What is that iniquity? Sin. What is that? Transgression of the law. Remember in a previous lesson, those that abide under the refuge of lies. Look up Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15. Let's go to verse 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 125, verse 4. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. What is that heart? Your mind. What is being upright? The opposite of transgression of the law. Abiding under the name of of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. The full true gospel, which includes the name. Inseparable. Because the Most High is in agreement with Yahweh Shai. So they are joined together in truth. Psalms 125. Verse 5, as for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. And this is talking about the Israel of the Most High. That's his elect. Let's go to that. Israel of God. Galatians 6, verse 16. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. So the elect dwells within his tabernacle. And the house of the Lord has a seating arrangement, a max capacity, reserved seats, those that were chosen before the foundation of the world. Read Ephesians chapter 1. That's his elect. Let's go from there. The Psalms 
118. <clears throat> the book of Psalms, chapter 118, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endure forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endure forever. And remember, that's talking about the Israel of the Most High, his elect, that are going to be saved by election of grace, predestination. Verse 3, let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endure forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endure forever. That mercy is to Israel. And the men of Jacob are up and coming kings and priests. Let's go to verse I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. What place? The name of the Lord is a strong tower, a defense unto them that trust in him, his name, his word, prophecy. Let's go back to verse 5. I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? So the Most High controls good and evil. One of my favorite shows is watching Snapped on Oxygen. Let me pull that up. And this man, I'm going to tell you what he said. Let me pull him up first. It's an Edomite called the Happy Face Edomite. Excuse me, the Happy Face Serial Killer. Let me tell you what he said. This is him, and he was a serial killer famous in Oregon, but he was a truck driver, so he was, con he was committing murders along the west coast of America. Well, let me tell you what he said. One of his victims, she bragged about con artist, being a con artist and finagling men out of money. So the Most High uses his left hand to bring judgment. And he stirs up wicked demonic spirits. That's why the Bible says there be spirits that were created for vengeance. And there was another woman that he killed. She bragged about claiming that she was going, going to put a baby on another man, although she knew it was not his. So he took her out too. So when you're in the spirit, you understand the most high says, I kill and I make alive. So we ought to fear the Lord. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So these two women were boasting in their wickedness. And he was picking up prostitutes. So the Most High stirs up spirits created for vengeance. He is the one that we should fear. He says he creates good and evil. Pursuant to Isaiah 45, verse 7. Anyway, let's go back to verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore, 
shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. So he's going to take vengeance on them that touch his anointed ones. That's why he says in Psalms chapter 105, touch not my anointed, neither do my prophets no harm. Let's go to verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. No, we're going to trust the Keebler elf, Dr. Frauchi. Let's read that again. Or that wicked, bugged out black China Eve, looking like a damn guppy fish. So who are we going to trust? Let's read this again. Psalms 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. So at a certain point in time, the Most High is going to lift up his right arm and his right hand. So that's through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. He's going to raise up the men of the tabernacle of David as mighty men, as in the days of old, like Samson, like King David, like the mighty men of King David. Verse 11, they compass me about, yea, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. I thought his name did not matter. There's some high-ranking beta male simps out there that say his name does not matter and that we can call him Yo Play Yogurt if we like. The Most High is going to kill these weak beta males. Let's close out here. Psalms 37. Let's go to verse 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Why? Because evil or bad times... If you're dwelling under the refuge of lies, then you're not dwelling under the protection of the Most High. So we have to forsake iniquity during bad times and not dwell with evil doers. Go to verse 9. Why, Lord? For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Who's waiting upon the Lord? Trusting on him and his name and this word, Bible prophecy, his elect. Let's go to verse 10. For yet a little while and the wicked shall not be, yea. Thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So we're going to lie down in green pasture, and be at rest. And the caveman shall not make us afraid, neither any of the other beasts of the field, the other nations. Go to verse 12. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth, his military, and the fangs of Maxine Waters, the serpent's juice, or the Kool Aid punch. Verse 13. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. So these cave bees got great judgment to look forward to.
along with the two-third wicked billy goats and wicked lambs. So great judgment is coming upon the earth. Where is this guppy fish at? And I dare wicked two-third Israelite man come on here running your mouth. This is ridiculous. The Bible says, through the woman, we all die. And the alpha men are pointing that out. And there was a key point that I missed yesterday during yesterday's video. 75% of the Israelite households, particularly the so-called African-American boys, are being raised by Eve. Why is that number 75% significant? Two-thirds. The Bible is the most accurate book on planet Earth and the most powerful book. So what does that tell you? The most high is in control. What is that? His word does not go out void. He said his word shall not return unto him void. And in Zechariah 13, verse 8, let's go ahead and close out with that one. Zechariah 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. So he's going to kill two-thirds of his own people. Now this scripture is talking about the daughter of Babylon. Specifically, let's go to verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my power. How do we know this is America? Now, he's also going to gather his elect around the world. But Zechariah is talking about America. I'm going to show you. Go to Zechariah 2, verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven saith the Lord. The land of the north, North America, the daughter of Babylon. And he also reiterates here that we're scattered through the four winds. So he's also going to gather and elect scattered around the world. But Zechariah 13, verse 8 and 9 is talking about America specifically, the land of the north or the daughter of Babylon. See, let's keep reading. Verse 7. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. There's the answer right there. What does it mean, deliver thyself? We have to spiritually detach first and make our bodies a living sacrifice. Walk in the spirit and kill the flesh. But eventually, this is going to manifest into a physical departure. Because he's going to say, come up hither. So he's going to call forth his people, elect. And we can read that in Revelations chapter 11 and chapter 18. So he's going to call forth his people. Verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations which spoil you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them 
and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts have sent me. So he's going to shake things up through his right arm, his right hand. You know how Trust in the Lord and wait upon him. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Rock a thumb, Kwam Yasharala, and Abad Baba. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.